so we've got Illustrator pulled up here today. I'm going to be going over a super tip on how to apply a pattern, a pattern swatch to a shape in Illustrator. Um, there's a question that Andrew and John had who are sitting here with me watching. So I'm going to be teaching them as we go along. Hey guys, this is John. <laughs> hey, it's Andrew. Here is our shape. Um, as you can see, I just used the polygon shape tool. Really, it can be any shape. We're going to first figure out how to create a lined pattern. Um, and the best way I've found to do that is by going to the line tool, uh, drawing a line, um, hitting Alt, and then the down arrow. And that will space things exactly one pixel if you have your width set on the lines to a pixel, then it will be perfect spacing for this kind of stripe pattern. Um, now you're going to take that, rotate it 45 degrees, um, get your rectangular tool, and click to this first anchor, hit shift, and then click to the second anchor. Um, we're going to be using that shape later, but for now you're just going to stretch these lines across the shape that you just created. Um, this doesn't really need to have a fill or anything of that matter. It's just for go to object, expand, and expand the stroke so that they become fills. Uh, now you can select over that shape that you made. Um, let's see if we can open up Pathfinder. Um, Pathfinder is going to help us to crop this out. I'm going to use the. I don't think minus back on this one. I think the crop will work. We have to have all of these selected. It has to be in the front or the back. I can never remember. There we go. So if it's in the front, then it will crop out all that extra space. Uh, now you've got this seamless shape that you can go over into your swatches, uh, drag it in there, um, and now when you've got this shape all you have to do is select your swatch, and it looks a little bit wonky on the screen, but when you print it, if you see when you zoom in, there are points when you can see that it's pretty seamless. Um, and that texture can be applied to any shape, which is really nice. Also now if you go in and if you make this bigger um, and drag it over into your swatches, it will look a lot alike. Let's see what I'm missing. I'm not sure why I can't make that into a swatch. Maybe not enough memory. There we go. So this bigger version that you just made can now be applied. Um, so just save this over to the side when you're working on stuff. I always just copy one over here. That way, if you want, you can go in and you can change your colors and you can make a new swatch of that, of that size. <laughs> Looks like we're set to some sort of grayscale mode, but you get the idea. This can be applied to any type of design. It's just hard to get it to be that seamless. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. That makes great sense. Thank you, Kyle. You're welcome. Um, a common flaw with this is that if you copy this shape that has this pattern, um, they will always keep the same placing. As you can see, this is seamless with that, even though they're two completely different shapes. And so that can get kind of weird, because then you can't distinguish between shapes, because they don't really collide in that way. But if you go to Object and Expand um, that fill, it should not work. <laughs> Um, actually, something that I also do is I'll take this, let's copy this, make this one a little bit bigger, and then if you use this shape, maybe as a cropping point. Make it a clipping mask. See, look, I've got a really unique shape now. I've got a really unique shape. Oh yeah, look, that looks expanded, doesn't it? There's something in there that's expanded for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the two. That's the super hot tip. That's the super tip. 
Super tipsy, that was a one. Thanks for watching.